Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Freehold. We are so glad you could be here with us this morning. Just want to remind you all that we will be back in the sanctuary next Sunday, December 6th, to celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. But I'm getting ahead of things as this is the first Sunday of Advent. So welcome and Happy New Year to you all. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. Let all creation sing for joy at the coming of the Lord. The Lord of hosts is coming to restore us. God's face will shine, and we will be saved. Light dawns for the righteous, and joy to the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord. Give thanks to God's holy name. Please join us in the prayer of invocation. Faithful God, we wait for you to come. We know that you will because you already have and because you promised to return. While we wait, send your spirit so that we may grow in grace. Prepare us for your coming, Lord. Amen.
Now hear the call to confession. Prepare the way of the Lord. Let us make our confession to God. Please join us in the prayer of confession. O promised Christ, we are a world at war. Our peace depends on your coming. We are a sinful people. Our pardon depends on your coming. We are full of good intentions, but weak at keeping promises. Our only hope of doing God's will is that you should come and help us do it. Lord Christ, word made flesh, our world waits for your peace, for your pardon, and for your grace. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now hear these words of forgiveness. As we hear the ancient prophecies of the coming of the Messiah, we long for the day when death will be swallowed up and every tear will be wiped away. As we wait expectantly for Christ's promised return, we live in the assurance of God's gracious forgiveness. Know that you are forgiven. Amen. And now, as we have been reconciled to God, let us also be reconciled to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please join us in the prayer for illumination. O oh God, our beginning and end, by whose command time runs its course, bless our impatience, perfect our faith, and while we await the fulfillment of your promises, grant us hope in your word. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, 
as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning and happy new year. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the new year in the church calendar. This is the Sunday when we celebrate hope, the hope for the coming Messiah, the Christ child who will come to save us, the Christ who will return to the world. I borrowed my sermon title from a poem by Emily Dickinson, but my title was also inspired by a really heartwarming story that I saw on Facebook a few days ago. Perhaps you saw it too. This year's Christmas tree in Rockefeller Center was harvested in Oneonta, New York. The tree arrived at Rockefeller Center a couple days later, and then workers set up the tree and began to decorate it. During the process, one of the workers found a stowaway. A tiny owl, a saw wet owl, was clinging to one of the branches and it didn't want to leave. Apparently, it was in the tree before it was cut down, and it rode the tree all the way to Manhattan. Can you believe that? The worker who found the owl went back down to the ground and got a box. I'm guessing that worker cut off the branch to which the owl was clinging, and then he placed the owl in the box. If you haven't seen it, it's an adorable picture. Then the owl was taken to a rehabilitation center and examined by a veterinarian. It will be released back into the wild once it's safe. I don't know about you folks, but that's the kind of story that makes me feel good about humanity. A lot of people decided to do the right thing and in the process, they helped out a little owl that was probably very scared and confused. It gives me hope that we can all do kind and merciful things. Our reading from the prophet Isaiah is filled with longing. The prophet hopes for deliverance from unbearable circumstances. He doesn't understand why God hasn't delivered God's chosen people from their suffering. This text speaks to me in these times, especially in verse 6. The prophet says, We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. This brings to mind all of the hand sanitizer and N95 masks that characterize our lives these days. There are many parallels. The book of Isaiah was most likely written by three different authors over a period of a couple centuries. Today's reading comes from the third author after a time known as the Babylonian captivity. During that time, the Babylonian Empire 
conquered the kingdom of Judah, captured all of the religious and political leaders in Jerusalem, and then took them into captivity in Babylon. The exiles remained in Babylon for 60 to 80 years. New generations were born in captivity. During that time, they prayed. They lamented their fate, and they asked God for deliverance from captivity. And eventually, they were set free. The Persians defeated the Babylonians, and the exiles were allowed to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. Everything was going to be great, except it wasn't. The exiles weren't welcomed home. The people who remained in Judah moved on without the exiles. They picked up the pieces and carried on. They were not impressed by the returning exiles. So here they are, God's chosen people, Israel, called for deliverance, and they got it. But deliverance wasn't as good as they thought it would be. And now Isaiah is pleading with God again for something new for a better reality. This is part of a much larger pattern for the people called Israel. Consider their history. The Israelites lived as slaves in the land of Egypt. They asked for deliverance and they were set free. But as they were wandering in the desert, they lost faith. They made an idol. They couldn't let go of their old ways in Egypt. They prolonged their journey. They even made it worse. Moses and Aaron and the Israelites who left Egypt never got to move into the promised land. Moses got to look at it from a distance, but that was about it. God raised up a new generation of leaders among the Israelites who were wandering in the desert, and they, the Israelites who were raised up in that second generation, crossed into the land of Canaan. Each tribe of Israel took its own part of the land, and things seemed good at first. But then the people turned away from God. They were ruled by chieftains, also known as judges, many of whom were corrupt. So the people cried out to God for a king. It seemed like a great idea at the time, but it didn't work out so well. The first king was Saul. He started out great, but he lost his faith. God chose another king, David. David started out as a virtuous young man, but he was corrupted by power. He became unrighteous. David was followed by Solomon, who was blessed with wisdom, wealth, and power. And like his father before him, Solomon was corrupted. The kingdom shattered. The people suffered. None of this, none of this was lost on Isaiah, on any of the Isaiahs. The prophets all knew this history. They knew how kings and commoners all fell short and failed to keep the faith. It's hard for us too. It's hard for us to keep the faith when we are so often separated from one another. It's hard to keep the faith when our technology fails us and we can't hear the live stream of our worship service. It's hard to keep the faith when we're all so busy arguing with one another. This pandemic has forced us to make a lot of changes. Some of them have been unpleasant, like this Thanksgiving, for instance. 
other changes have been difficult but worthwhile, such as the way that so many of us have embraced the new technologies and the new opportunities for worship that we have, well, because of all of the new technology. And yet, we're all sick and tired of the masks and the Zoom meetings. We want this thing to be over. We want to be delivered. As I think of this, I can't help but think of that little owl in the Christmas tree, clinging to that branch. It's quite an image in a time of crisis. The soft wet owl is one of the tiniest species of owl in North America. It's about the same size as a robin. Its wingspan is about 18 to 22 inches wide. Not very big. While it is a predator, it's not so big that it's safe from other predators. Hawks and larger owls will eat the soft wet owl so it likes to take shelter in pine trees where it's hard to see and even harder to get at. I think we can all relate to the idea of taking shelter in this weird time. Shelter is good, but its twin sister is isolation and that's not healthy. Emily Dickinson wrote most of her poems in isolation. As she became an adult, she turned into a recluse. None of her poems were published in her lifetime. Yet her poetry has influenced countless writers over the years. I think it's worth hearing this poem. Hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. And sweetest in the gale is heard, and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never in extremity it asked for a crumb of me. Scholars read the word hope in this poem as a metaphor for salvation. Perhaps hope is that bit of God that dwells within us and keeps us from giving up no matter how hard the wind is blowing, no matter how violent the storm. We see that violent imagery in the prophet Isaiah's plea to God Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. This tearing of the heavens, this storm from on high, this should sound familiar to every Christian. We hear this phrase used in the Gospels in the accounts of the baptism of Jesus. As Christians, we read this plea from Isaiah as a call for a Messiah. We see the fulfillment of this cry in the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This isn't just about God's self-sacrifice. This is also about God's self-awareness. This is about a God that changes his mind. A God who loves us so much that he's going to keep on trying, no matter how foolish or blind or mean we can be to one another. Our God loves us so much that he's going to keep trying new things, even when we don't seem to learn from our mistakes. God hears our pleas, just as God heard the prophet Isaiah. We have to be patient. Isaiah cried out that God would tear the heavens open and come down and 
God did something like 400 years later. So we have to be patient too. At the same time, we have to have the tenacity of that little owl. Yet we also have to know when to let go of the old things and fly off into God's hopeful future. Thanks be to God. Amen. thank you for your continued support and generosity in these trying times. As always, if you can dig a little deeper, please do. Please help us out. But if you can't, know that we are here to support you, that we love you, and that we understand that these are trying times. Do whatever you can. Now let us let us with joy and thanksgiving return our praises unto God. We give thanks through our talents, our time, and our treasure. Thanks be to God whose love creates us. Thanks be to God whose mercy redeems us. Thanks be to God whose grace leads us into the future. Amen. going to do something a little different with the prayers of the people today. We're going to begin with the psalm that was part of the lectionary readings for this Sunday. 
Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, followed by verses 17 through 19. We're going to say it together as a corporate prayer, and then I'm going to offer the other prayers. Please join me in this and follow along during the prayers. Let us pray the psalm together. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Amen. This morning, we lift up Patsy Saylor and her family. As most of you know, Bob Saylor passed away last Sunday. Prayers for healing and wholeness for Patsy in this time of loss. Please join me as I say, restore us, O God. We also lift up the Fitz family the Williams family, Trina Parks and her family, the Tagorda and Salzburg families, and all those who are grieving lost loved ones. We ask that God shine a light in their darkness and help them to feel connected in a time of loss and isolation. Restore us, O oh God. We lift up all the families who are separated from one another by physical distance or emotional distance or by this pandemic. Restore us, O oh God. We lift up Joni, Jasmine, Fila, Roderick and Tasha, and Maria and Ricardo Baptista as they move forward facing their health challenges. Restore us, O oh God. We lift up everyone who is questioning their faith in the face of the chaos and hardship in their lives. Restore us, O oh God of hosts. We also lift up Beth, Bev, Marty, Pat, Sophie, Betty and Karen, Bobby, Eileen, Pat, Glynis and Marie and Joseph, Ella, Kylie, Patsy, Todd, Matthew and Heather. Restore us, O oh God of hosts. We lift up the homeless, Lord, and we ask that you show us the way of mercy. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts, let your face shine that we may be saved. Amen. Now, let us pray as our Lord taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Joy 
to the world the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare him room. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and nature sing. And heaven and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let all their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains. Repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow. For as the curse is found, for as the curse is found, for as, for as the curse is found. Beloved, as you go forth into the world, be hopeful and shine with God's love. Rebuild and repair relationships. Go forth and be instruments of God's peace and love and reconciliation. Do not return evil for evil to any person, but know that we are all loved by God and that we are all called to reflect that love to everyone we meet. Go forth and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and let all God's children say, Amen. Mm -hmm.